Hello, hello, hello. My name is Caroline. I go by she, her pronouns, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am gathered here with you to talk about a new subject, the commodification of queerness. But before we jump to that, I am going to be referencing my past video about like lesbian representation in television throughout this video, but I had a brain moment the other day where I realized I completely forgot to mention one of the most important characters in the scope of current day lesbian representation in TV. <sighs> Ruin Jewels from Euphoria. Um, yeah, I want to mention this in this video because I totally forgot to mention them and the god-awful representation that was done with them in season two and the way that Elliot was able to just go in there and mess up everything that was established to be lesbian canon. So yeah, I might expand on that if you guys want me to, but I'm pretty sure if you've seen Euphoria, you know how invalidating that was to um, Jules' sexuality, even Rue's sexuality, and the fact that Jules, in her own episode, came out as basically a lesbian and being done with men the whole time in this new season. She's with Elliot. So, yeah, that was ass, and I just wanted to touch on that because I totally forgot and it would have totally helped build my points in that last video. So, yeah, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll be touching on certain points from that video in this video today, but I just wanted to mention it. Hi, guys. It is... August Carey here finally editing because my laptop broke and I'm using my girlfriend's computer finally 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 But I also need to mention the fact that recently a not only is there tons of lesbophobia going around on TikTok, the lesbian curse everything but also I need to talk um, eventually a little bit more about the fact that 18 television shows etc projects media projects featuring lesbian and queer women characters have been cancelled this year. More than 18, I think. I think 18 is like the minimum that has been cancelled. First Kill, The Wilds, it's crazy. Um, those are just a couple examples. It's awful and I just need to throw that in there while I'm giving updates for my last video. So, without further ado, let's get started with this video. Today, my friends, we are chatting about the commodification of queerness. <laughs> None of us are strangers to rainbow capitalism, especially during June. Um, the corporate facade of virtue signaling to marginalized groups and LGBTQ people without any real wealth distribution or advocation on their part. And like, I just wanna say like, everyone knows how trash Amazon is, but did you guys see this ad on your Instagram feed during Pride Month of like Clea Duvall being like, I like girls from But I'm a Cheerleader. Whole time they don't even carry that movie on their streaming service. Really weird. I don't know, it was just kind of like the epitome of virtue signaling from a corporation that doesn't actually care about queer people on Pride Month. Fair warning, this video might just come out as a rant. I didn't really have like a point at the end of writing this script of like, okay, and why did I mention this today? I just kind of wanted to talk about it because it's important and it's obvious and sometimes it doesn't do anyone any favors, except for the straight people or people who don't live material realities. As an LGBTQ person, any favors. So, I don't know if that sentence made sense. This is my channel, I can whine if I want to, and I'm gonna do just that today about commodification of queerness in the media and in the economy, market, whatever. Look at me, Robert Reich. You guys might think this next part is controversial, but you could say that this video is inspired by Snail Mail's post. So if you don't know, sometime I think around I don't know when this was the earlier in the year um snail mill posted this instagram story that read women who write about women solely for profit post a pic of your boyfriend tag go and in response phoebe bridgers posted a picture of her boyfriend and this kind of got the whole indie scene the wlw the bi scene going ham um a lot of lesbians were like this makes sense snail mail is just talking about the fact that writing about women for profit when you don't live that material reality is, you know, it can be problematic. And I also think, obviously, bi women have boyfriends, 
live your life, but it can be harmful to a degree. In that clip, I didn't fully finish my thought, but I don't mean that bi women having boyfriends is problematic inherently um, at all. I just meant that um, the conversation about lesbian relationships um, and bi women in like speaking on having a relationship with a woman or a non-man um, can be toxic when it's only being used for profit or they are not living that reality of um, facing lesbophobia, homophobia every day. Do you catch my drift? I'm not trying to say that bad women can't have boyfriends, guys. You can. Yay. Woohoo. And after all of this, after all the hubbub, um, Lindsay of Snail Mail um, responded like this. Uh, I posted a story yesterday about the issue of queer baiting in music. As a lesbian, I feel like I have every right to voice my concerns in this area. The story was not directed at bi people or anyone specific. It was just referencing the commodification of queerness. Do we have a problem with that or are we good? Now, when I read this, I admit I love Phoebe, but I did take LJ's side. And um, I just thought that Lindsay brought up good points with the phrase commodification of queerness really sticking with me. I brought this up in my last video about lesbian rep and TV, but when a queer person exists being queer, their material realities reflect that. They navigate the world as a queer person. They face like micro and macro disc discrimination and they live their life way differently than a straight person or a straight passing person in a straight relationship may face. Of course, there's people in straight passing relationships or straight relationships that um, do face discrimination on micro and macro levels, but for the most part, it is a different lived reality than someone who, say, is um, non-men loving non-men or a queer relationship, if you will. And this is, of course, a problem when someone who is straight or in a straight relationship is somewhat selling their queerness. This is a problem for they get the benefits from identifying with a stereotyped and problematic view of the LGBTQ community while navigating life and having the benefits from and the materialities of someone who fits the heteronormative status quo. There is a dialectic to this though, just as I mentioned, it is of course not all bad appropriation when we bring queerness into the music industry. There are some straight girlies and peeps who do make some really great music that queer communities can benefit from and also enjoy. And also these people become icons, Charlie XCX, Billy Girl. Um, but this can also be bad. Paris O of PRS Magazine writes about this dialectic, saying, Pronouns, transness, gender nonconformity, and any other identities challenging the binary have been leading the discussion, with brands, companies, and people alike adopting a push toward inclusivity on all levels. But, Paris continues, when observing the current UK music scene's relationship with queer artists, we can see that their queerness is framed so that it sells to the mainstream, dealing in the stereotyping of feminine presenting men for hordes of rowdy hen parties, or the prideful anthemic choruses and visuals of the night out at GAY, heavily focused on the cis, white, male, gay experience. But as an understanding of queerness and identities beyond the gender binary are broadened, it is individual expression, not cliched marketing techniques that give way to a deeper understanding of queerness in music. Mixed with the side of stereotyping, the powers that be can profit from a queer audience association, whether the artist actually identifies within the community or not. I thought that this take was very to the point. I think that obviously corporations as well as straight passing or queer artists with privilege, grand privilege, can definitely be guilty of this, etc, etc. This is especially relevant within the music industry as Paris O kind of stated, evidently. And even just on a social media platforms in which folks benefit from bringing up and profiting off of their queerness, when really that may not be how they navigate experience and are marginalized within the world. The homophobia, sexism, transphobia, and more that I and my queer community face on the day to day is harmful, impactful, terrifying, and literally life altering, truly. And I think that with the trendiness of LGBTQ themes and limiting rep in media, etc., it can bring out good. Of course, like as I spoke about again in my last video, seeing queer representation is so important. And while there can be appropriation on that front, as I'll touch on later, there are a lot of beneficial outcomes from having gay, lesbian, trans, bisexual, queer gender non-conforming representation in any form of media are you understanding do you get what i mean so let me bring it back to this quote and my dissection of it so it can of course bring good but it can also bring harm if taken and run with by the wrong people all of this is to say that capitalism works to commodify 
absolutely anything it can. It profits off of anything it can, literally, even if that is exactly what it exists against. You feel me? It's easier for an artist, particularly one who lives as a straight person or navigates the world with great privileges, and one who navigates the world as a visibly straight person or someone in a straight relationship, to write and profit off of music about queer relationships, henceforth using queerness as a social commodity, if you will. Hope this makes sense. This also works for of course, out and proud straight people, if you can call it that, but in a different way. People such as Drake, The Weeknd, uh, Machine Gun Kelly also like, you know, sexualizing Megan Fox when that is literally her career um, that she hates is being sexualized by men in the industry and she's talked about that. Just tons of, tons of men in the industry. Machine Gun Kelly's new movie, I watched a commentary video where he uses Megan Fox as like I guess a lesbian in his movie, but in like a very sexualized way. These people use lesbian relationships, etc., etc., as a tool to fetishize. It's a current problem. It's homophobia, lesbophobia, and it's quirky and so normalized that this queerness is sexualized and in a derogatory lens and is henceforth commodified again, by straight men in the male gaze used to sell music, movies, TV, and cunning lyric at the expense of gay people, lesbians specifically. Dare I touch on the Savannah Santos um, controversy and the way that we get literally a new lesbophobic anthem every week? What's up with that like lesbian song too that's like, these men make me wish I was a lesbian? These dudes make me wish I was a lesbian Is that crazy to say? It's so weird. It's, it's it's glorifying the lesbophobia and the difficulties of being gay and saying, wow, it would be so much easier if I was gay. And of course, someone saying that can also be, you know, a sign of compet and they just haven't come out to themselves yet. But when we see it on a media lens and a macro lens, this causes issues for people in those communities. Um, further, Savannah Santos, <laughs> her song, Like a Woman, was intended, yes, to express Santos's sexuality, I suppose, but I'm doubtful that there was not a part of her and a part of her managing team who thought, hey, making a song about you wanting a man who's like a woman would hit real home for the LGBTQ community, if only they fucking knew. <laughs> um, and they knew that it would monetarily benefit her to make a song about her bisexuality and attraction to women, all the while singing about the gender binary and gender roles in a really distasteful and hate crimey way not even the slur towards lesbians that was said in her song was the worst part like she changed the lyric and i was like this song has so much more wrong with it but i digress songs like this are marketed to and for the lgbtq community but they are really a form of appropriation in rainbow capitalism in and of itself. Sure, queer artists with lived experience and such can make liberating music and art for and by queer people. That's amazing. And I love those artists. I love that community. I love everything about it. But sometimes non-queer people, et cetera, et cetera, may be able to profit off of something that they're not experiencing just to get a viral TikTok song or just to um, garner a trendy fan base. And this is messed up. Roshika Parahu, in their thesis for University of Western Ontario, states, for many pop artists, queer is what they do, not who they are. They perform queerness rather than identify as queer. The research I present here suggests that popular culture's understanding of queerness relies on a heteronormative lens, whereby queerness is objectified and paraded primarily as an artistic performance. And this can go along with queer theory and the queering of performance and art and everyday life, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it can do good, but sometimes this profiting off of a queer performance rather than recognizing the harsh realities of people in the communities um, can do bad things for the daily lives of LGBTQ people by ignoring those realities and basically turning them into a trend where no real change is being done and simply people are glorified, romanticized, and issues still exist, you know? This also happens in television. So while I have yet to watch this season, I saw somewhere that Only Murders in the Building season two will feature a kissing scene between Selena Gomez and Cara Delevingne. And though I'm not sure what the context is, maybe Selena's character does come out, maybe she's bisexual, maybe she's figuring it out, and that's valid, of course, in a real life situation and even in TV show characters. I'm like, 
somewhat cynically doubting that they will go into developing a relationship, thus placing this episode in the gimmicky kiss episode trope in which um, stereotypically lesbian characters are made to kiss each other in a sexualized male gazy way, thus taking away from the heart and the truth and the reality of these characters' sexualities and the way that these impact their everyday lives. It's a way to appeal to the queer community via a promise of a minute of intimacy while not having any more substance to the representation or to the character's storyline together or separately. Michael Jakic says in his article, consumers have become attracted to exotic or culturally related trends. By extracting and consuming styles and characteristics associated with marginalized cultures, society eliminates diversity through homogenization, while the presence of gay characters in the media shows a movement toward greater acceptance of homosexuality. The commodification of gay stereotypes demonstrates the hegemonic nature of mass culture and the justification of exploitation through tolerance. Is this point making sense? I think in my own words, I think that this is especially relevant in TikTok. I think that the LGBTQ culture of TikTok has been so great for many, including myself, to find community, learn about my sexuality, read the lesbian master dog, learn about compet, see LGBT people being LGBT, and it's done a lot of good. But I also think that turning it into a trend or something to be bought and sold and traded on the market, and especially something that becomes homogenized, um, can sometimes take away from things. I think I'm a collectivist, I'm a communist, and I think that this can be really good, but when we are completely taking away the sanctity of certain communities um, in order to sell a profit on the public market, that's really messed up, and it kind of um, therefore increases stereotypes, makes something that's very real and very permanent for many people a trend and we don't like that um finally let's talk about pride month and rainbow capitalism so there's a lot to talk about here but let me just real quick touch on the political side of things so political commodification of queerness can be so huge in the bipartisan and neoliberal spaces um specifically rainbow capitalism and holding policy over the people's heads with promises of progress if you just donate five dollars to aoc just donate 25 dollars to nancy pelosi and we'll maybe protect your rights um this happens so frequently especially unfortunately with reproductive rights being at stake for AFAB people, it's really terrifying. This is definitely something to talk about and be made important. On rainbow capitalism, my fave Ellie Medher of Dressing Dyke says, once again, it's Pride Month. And rather than protesting the continued mistreatment of LGBTQ people around the world, we are encouraged to consume. Big businesses change their logos to the colors of the rainbow and release pride theme ranges. And this is supposed to placate us, distract us from the multiple conglomerates whose profits fund far-right bigotry. The conservative party who are in power in the UK post Happy Pride Month and pat themselves on the back for their alleged advancing of LGBTQ rights on the same day that they propose a withdrawal from Stonewalls, the UK leading LGBTQ organization diversity scheme. Pride marchers are once again unable to go ahead, but celebration and consumption are one and the same. As long as we can purchase, surely there's no need to protest. She goes on to talk about the original rainbow flag and how the original intention was meant to be liberating a symbol of safety and pride and community for LGBT people. People, not a symbol for corporate gain and um, performative allyship, which we do see a lot, stating that while she and other LGBT people that she knows around her enjoy and wear the rainbow oftentimes, she never generally wears pieces from capitalistic pride collections such as Primark, which I'm going to touch on right now. Medhurst also references Melissa Tyler and Sheena Vachani's um, article Chasing Rainbows in which they say, equality branding effectively co-ops the aesthetic basis of the affective sense of identification that the rainbow symbolizes. The espoused signified commitment to equality becomes conditional, dependent upon the contribution of something of value to the organization or the purchasing of a product. The scenario becomes less a concern with what Primark can do for the LGBTQ community and more a case of what its rainbow colors can do for the brand. Medhurst herself continues, this alienation of identity means that queer existence become despecified. The rainbow is meant to represent us all while ignoring the vastly different realities that each queer person faces. Even if different communities are addressed, very occasionally a pride collection will include a trans flag as well as a six stripe rainbow, or if we're really lucky, some version of the lesbian flag. 
It is not our lives and our concerns that take center stage, but rather our purchasing power. If LGBT people are only relevant when it comes to pride, our struggles and protests go unheard. She continues with talking about lesbian specific struggles, including the way that the word lesbian is banned from many of these pride lines uh, and spaces and clothing brands, etc, etc. As I and you are probably personally aware, even the word lesbian is somewhat banned on TikTok, maybe even YouTube, maybe my entire channel is doomed me again it also ties in about how the word lesbian is viewed in an overly sexual way and an accessible way a lot of gay women don't want to use the word because of the way that straights and um non-lesbians have appropriated it and made it a dirty nasty um harmful seeming word when it is so not please let me know if you want me to talk more about that in future videos it's as if lesbians for sure can be profit off of in a vague sense, but there's a lack of support and awareness and even capitalism uh, for any deviating identity, which is not palatable corporate facade of a camp white gay man, which even that, of course, is a subhuman view of gay people. So all of this can tie together in the end and basically weave the narrative that this can be harmful of course like music tv etc even pride lines can be liberating for some but it can also be detrimental to many and i just wanted to make this quick video to bring attention to this fact and to the attention to how this harms communities and invalidates people whose lives are literally defined by their queerness rather than benefited from and rather than something that they choose to identify with for monetary and social game um the rainbow flag in all of its beneficial performative glory and however mainstream it is it's still misunderstood by homophobes and others alike there's a long 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 fucking way to go while attention and mainstream acceptance and promotion can help do the positives really outweigh the negatives i don't know i just wanted to make this video since it's been on my mind and i thought that snail mail story was a good talking point albeit six months late i just wanted to um kind of bring an open-ended discussion to my little corner of youtube do you agree disagree with anything i said um obviously there's more to be said um regarding this whole situation but i just wanted to write a quick script get something out there but yeah i don't want it to sound like i'm just like generally against any form of um queerness in the media because i love I, my whole video my whole last video is about how important that is but i do think that there are pitfalls and whether i failed to point those out specifically in this video i hope you can see the broad overview of what this means um when pride month is said and done when we're in july and i'm getting hate crimed by my by a member of my extended family for having a pride flag um and being compared to very explicit things that are not at all um aligning with the lgbt community so so, yeah i'm sure you guys have personal and macro experience with that and i just wanted to bring light to that within this video so yeah thank you so much for watching i enjoy having y'all watch me in this corner of youtube and um i hope you enjoyed this video please sound off in the comments below let me know what you thought and i look forward to hearing from y'all see you next video